the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 32. That evening, after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Everyone comes out to Jesus, and one after another, Jesus heals them, not only of sickness, but he casts out demons. Now, in 21st century America, especially among 21st century Christians, uh, there has been an incredible tendency to either say, well, that, you know, that only happened back in Bible times, or they didn't understand human psychology like we do. Um, I will just say right up front, what we read here in the scripture, it is accurate and it is true. And the tactics of the enemy have not changed. Demonic attack and demonic possession is real. And it is something that, at least in my experience and the experience of many pastors I know, including Pastor Bickle and Pastor Schussler, but others as well, uh, it is something that we've seen more of, especially in these last few years. As our culture moves further and further away from biblical values, what it does is it opens up a door, a window to the demonic. Let me use a, a few illustrations, if I may. The first time I ever encountered um, spirits uh, oppressing people and, and inhabiting a, a building was as a brand new pastor. I, I had just gotten out of seminary. I was serving in a congregation in the northern suburbs of, of Detroit. It, it was a, a congregation that I had done my internship or my vicarage in a year earlier. And after finishing my last year at the seminary, I was called back there to be an evangelism pastor. I, I still remember the day I was in my office and my secretary passed to me a phone call. It was a phone call from a young mom who was calling because her husband said, call that church and see if they can do something about it. It turned out that he had actually gone to Sunday school a couple of times with some friends of his when he was a kid at the congregation where I was serving. He was not a follower of Jesus. His wife was not a follower of Jesus. They had no affiliation with any church. They, they were pretty much just kind of irreligious. But she called because her husband said, call that place, see if they can do something about it. And here is what she told me. She said, we have a problem in our home. We are hearing footsteps. There is some sort of a spirit presence in the house. I, I can sense that presence. And, and I've been talking to him and telling him to leave. He will not leave. He is attacking our baby. The, the nursery all of a sudden will get ice cold even though the rest of the house is, is warm and the heat is working just fine. We hear sounds of footsteps on the, the stairwell going down into the basement, uh, unusual things taking place. Can you come over and talk to us and take care of this? And without thinking a whole lot, I said, sure. Um, I... I uh, at that point, remember thinking, they did not teach me how to deal with this at the seminary. <laughs> Uh, today, if I had it to do over, I would have gathered a couple of other strong believers and taken them with me. At that time, I didn't know better. A and so I went to this home. I remember driving there, praying like crazy. You know, Lord, please. Uh, you know, I need your power. To, uh, show me what to do. I'm going to do what I read in the Bible, and please come through. You know? <laughs> so one of the things I sensed God saying is, talk to them, ask questions. And so got to their house, sat down with them in the living room, and began by just asking them, can you kind of describe to me all that's been going on? And they shared with me what I, basically what I shared with you. I then asked some other questions. And one of the questions I asked is, can you tell me who lived here before you? I, I was not surprised by what I heard. They said, yeah, the people who lived here before us were drug dealers. And uh, they had been involved in the occult. And, uh, you know, and so we talked about that. 
and, and talked about the fact that that, that is not surprising because when you begin dealing with, with psychedelic you know, substances, when you, you begin dealing with other spiritual powers, you are inviting the enemy in. We talked further and uh, the, the wife explained that she knew when this spirit was in the house and, and so she was talking to the spirit. And then we talked about what that is and, and discussed the fact that when you talk to a spiritual being, what is that called? It's called prayer. And who does the Bible say we are to pray to and pray to alone? And that is the living God. And, and so we discussed further then what was taking place here and that what they were experiencing is very much like what we read in the New Testament. Uh, spirits active in people's lives. And so then discussed what Jesus said about that. He said, you know, one of the things we need to understand is that demonic spirits abhor a vacuum. And if you cast out spirits and do not replace them with the spirit of God, with the presence of God, they're simply going to bring seven others back with them and it will be worse than it was before. The end result is the couple confessed faith in Christ. They ended up being baptized along with their baby, went through instruction classes to, to study the scriptures and learn the fundamental teachings of Christianity. And we prayed in their home and in the name of Jesus, commanded those spirits to leave and to never come back. From that day on, the couple said they never experienced any of those things again. They never again heard the sounds of footsteps on the stairs. The baby's room never got cold again. They never sensed a presence in the house. There was never a spirit of oppression there. Their lives were changed. And what it did is it brought to, to me the reality that we are combating unseen powers, just as the Bible says, and that we dare not treat that lightly, but we also need to understand that the power of the Lord Jesus Christ is supreme, and that in his name, demons are cast out. In his name, the spirits are driven away, and it is essential that we be anchored in him. In the years since, I have encountered a number of other instances, different in, in details, but all involving spirit beings, you know, coming against individuals or inhabiting and oppressing them. But in the last five to ten years, I've seen more than the previous 30 plus years as a pastor. I have seen individuals, including individuals who have been lifelong church members, suddenly exhibit signs that, I, I mean, an outside observer looking at it would not say, well, that's your opinion. No, when you see someone fall to the floor, shaking violently, making strange sounds, and, and uh, you know, in the name of Jesus, we command you by the power of his blood to come out. When you see that take place, you realize this, this is genuine. This, this is the real thing. And, and I believe we are seeing in our, our country today more and more of this as, as quite frankly, drug addiction, uh, false worship, uh, values that have wandered so far away from what God desires of his people. We open ourselves up to this. And in talking to other pastors, I hear similar things from them. Uh, godly men who say they have never seen as much of it as they are seeing in these days. And I believe there's a reason for that. And that is that our culture is very rapidly moving away from solid biblical values and, and basically accepting a worldview that is contrary to what the scripture says. And when you do that, you open a door to the demonic powers. It does not mean that we are to live in fear. It does mean that we are to take this seriously.